I began this journey six months ago. My total focus was on building up our military, building up our strength, building up our borders, making sure that China, Japan, Mexico, both at the border and in trade, no longer takes advantage of our country. Certainly would never have made that horrible, disgusting, absolutely incompetent deal with Iran, where they get $150 billion, they're a terrorist nation. But I began it talking about other things, and those things are things I'm very good at, and maybe that's why I'm center stage. People saw it, people liked it, people respected it. A month ago, things changed. Radical Islamic terrorism came into effect even more so than it has been in the past. People like what I say, people respect what I say, and we've opened up a very big discussion that needed to be opened up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, since you last debated, Americans have witnessed terror attacks in Paris and San Bernardino. The FBI director says the country now faces the greatest terror threat since 9-11. You all have different approaches to keeping the country safe, and that will be the focus of tonight's debate. Mr. Trump, yes. as you mentioned in your opening statement, part of your strategy is to focus in on America's borders. To keep the country safe, you say you want to temporarily ban non-American Muslims from coming to the United States, ban refugees fleeing ISIS from coming here, deport 11 million people, and wall off America's southern border. Is the best way to make America great again to isolate it from much of the rest of the world? We are not talking about isolation. We're talking about security. We're not talking about religion. We're talking about security. Our country is out of control. People are pouring across the southern border. I will build a wall. It'll be a great wall. People will not come in unless they come in legally. Drugs will not pour through that wall. As far as other people, like in the migration, where they're going, tens of thousands of people having cell phones with ISIS flags on them, I don't think so, Wolf. They're not coming to this country. And if I'm president, and if Obama has brought some to this country, they are leaving. They're going. They're gone. Governor Bush, you called Mr. Trump unhinged when he proposed banning non-American Muslims from the United States. Why is that unhinged? Well, first of all, we need to destroy ISIS in the caliphate. That's, that should be our objective. The refugee issue will be solved if we destroy ISIS there, which means we need to have a no-fly zone, safe zones there for refugees, and to build a military force. We need to embed our forces, our troops, inside the Iraqi military. We need to arm directly the Kurds. And all of that has to be done in concert with the Arab nations. And if we're going to ban all Muslims, how are we going to get them to be part of a coalition to destroy ISIS? The Kurds are the greatest fighting force and our strongest allies. They're Muslim. Look, this is not a serious proposal. In fact, it will push the Muslim uh, world, the Arab world, away from us at a time when we need to re-engage with them to be able to create a strategy to destroy ISIS. So Donald, you know, is great at, at the uh, one-liners, but he's a chaos candidate, and he'd be a chaos president. He would not be the commander-in-chief we need to keep our country safe. Mr. Trump. Jeb doesn't really believe I'm unhinged. He said that very simply because he has failed in this campaign. It's been a total disaster. Nobody cares. And frankly, I'm the most solid person up here. I built a tremendous company. And all I want to do is make America great again. I don't want our country to be taken away from us. And that's what's happening. The policies that we've suffered under other presidents have been a disaster for our country. We want to make America great again. And Jeb, in all fairness, he doesn't believe that. Look, he, he mentioned me. I can bring it. I can talk. This is, this is the problem. Banning all Muslims will make it harder for us to do exactly what we need to do, which is to destroy ISIS. We need a strategy. We need to get the lawyers off the back of the warfighters. Right now, under President Obama, we've, we've created this 
the standard that is so high that it's impossible to be successful in fighting ISIS. We need to engage with the Arab world to make this happen. It is not a serious proposal to say that to the people that you're asking to, for their support that they can't even come to the country to even engage in a dialogue with us. That's not a serious proposal. We need a serious leader to deal with this. And I believe I'm that guy. Senator Rubin. You recently suggested uh, closing that internet up, those were your words, as a way to stop ISIS from recruiting online. Are you referring to closing down actual portions of the internet? Some say that would put the U.S. in line with China and North Korea. Well, look, this is so easy to answer. Uh, ISIS is recruiting through the internet. ISIS is using the internet better than we are using the internet, and it was our idea. What I wanted to do is I wanted to get our brilliant people from Silicon Valley and other places and figure out a way that ISIS cannot do what they're doing. You talk freedom of speech, you talk freedom of anything you want. I don't want them using our internet to take our young, impressionable youth and watching the media talking about how they're masterminds. These are masterminds. They shouldn't be using the word mastermind. These are thugs. These are terrible people in ISIS, not masterminds. And we have to change it from every standpoint. But we should be using our brilliant people, our most brilliant minds, to figure a way that ISIS cannot use the internet. And then on second, we should be able to penetrate the internet and find out exactly where ISIS is and everything about ISIS. And we can do that if we use our good people. Let me follow up, Mr. Trump. So are you open to closing parts of the internet? I would certainly be open to closing areas where we are at war with somebody. I sure as hell don't want to let people that want to kill us and kill our nation use our internet. Yes, sir, I am. Thank you. Uh, i got much more on this, but I want to move now back to well, Mr. This Trump. This legislation, hold on, hold on, this hold legislation on, on we, we have a lot, we have a I lot, deserves a little more attention. We have a lot to discuss. I want to move to Mr. Trump right now. We, we have a question on this war against ISIS and how you would fight and win this war. Here's the question from Facebook. Listen to this. I'm Josh Jacob from Georgia Tech. Recently, Donald Trump mentioned that we must kill the families of ISIS members. However, this violates the principle of distinction between civilians and combatants in international law. So my question is, how would intentionally killing innocent civilians set us apart from ISIS? Mr. Trump. We have to be much tougher. We have to be much stronger than we've been. We have people that know what's going on. You take a look at just the attack in California the other day. There were numerous people, including the mother, that knew what was going on. They saw a pipe bomb sitting all over the floor. They saw ammunition all over the place. They knew exactly what was going on. When you had the World Trade Center go, people were put into planes that were friends, family, girlfriends, and they were put into planes and they were sent back for the most part to Saudi Arabia. They knew what was going on. They went home and they wanted to watch their boyfriends on television. I would be very, very firm with families. And frankly, that will make people think because they may not care much about their lives, but they do care, believe it or not, about their families' lives. Donald, this is Go not, Governor this Bush. Is, Governor Bush. This, this is another example of the lack of seriousness. Look, this is, this is troubling because we're at war. They've declared war on us, and we need to have a serious strategy to destroy ISIS. But the idea that that is a solution to this is just, is just crazy. It makes no sense to suggest this. Look, two months ago, D Donald Trump said that ISIS was not our fight, just two months ago. He said that Hillary Clinton would be a great negotiator with Iran. And he got, gets his foreign policy experience from the shows. Uh, come on, give that me. is not a serious kind of candidate. We need someone that thinks this through, that can lead our country to, to safety and security. Mr. Trump, look, the, the problem is we need toughness. Honestly, I think Jeb is a very nice person. He's a very nice person, but we need tough people. We need toughness. We need intelligence, and we need tough. Jeb said when they come across the southern border, they come as an act of love. You said in September 30th that ISIS was not a I, I, Am I uh, not talking or are you talking, Jeb? I'm you talking right back. now. I'm talking. You can go back. You're not talking. talking. You interrupted me, September 30th, you said Are you going to apologize, said Jeb? No. Am I allowed to finish? Yes, one at a time. Excuse go ahead, me. Mr. Am Mr. I allowed to finish? Go ahead, Mr. Trump. So, little of your again, I, there, right? I, know, uh, I know you're trying Governor to build Bush, up your energy, Jeb, but it's not one, working One at a time. Well. Yeah. Look, look, look. 
We need a toughness. We need strength. We're not respected as a, you know, as a nation anymore. We don't have that level of respect that we need. And if we don't get it back fast, we're just going to go weaker, weaker, and just disintegrate. We can't allow that to happen. We need strength. We don't have it. When Jeb comes out and he talks about the border, and I saw it, and I was witness to it, and so was everyone else, and I was standing there, they come across as an act of love. He's saying the same thing right now with radical Islam. And we can't have that in our country. It just won't won't work. We need strength. Governor Bush. Donald, uh, you're not going to be able to insult your way to the presidency. That's not going to happen. And I do have the strength. <laughs> leadership, leadership, is not, leadership is not about attacking people and disparaging people. Leadership is about creating a serious strategy to deal with the threat of our time. And I laid out that strategy before the attacks. Uh, in Paris and before the attacks in San Bernardino, and it is the way that the, of the way forward. We need to increase our military spending. We need to deal with a no-fly zone in Syria, a safe zone. We need to focus on building a military that is second Thank to you. none, so that we can destroy Islamic terrorism. With Jeb's attitude, we will never be great again. That I can tell you, we will never be great again. All right, Hugh, Hugh, Hugh at Adenabash. Hugh, go ahead with the next question. I'd like to also go back to, though, another question, which is, is Donald Trump a serious candidate? The reason I ask this is, if you're going to close the Internet, realize, America, what that entails. That entails getting rid of the First Amendment, okay? It's no small feat. If you are going to kill the families of terrorists, realize that there's something called the Geneva Convention we're going to have to pull out of. It would defy every norm that is America. So when you ask yourself, whoever you are that think you're going to support Donald Trump, think, do you believe in the Constitution? Are you going to change the Constitution? <laughs> so they can kill us, but we can't kill them. That's what you're saying. And as far as the Internet is concerned, I'm not talking about closing the Internet. I'm talking about parts of Syria, parts of Iraq, where ISIS is spotting it. Now, you could close it. What I like even better than that is getting our smartest and getting our best to infiltrate their Internet so that we know exactly where they're going, exactly where they're going to be. I like that better. But we have to... I just can't imagine somebody booing. These are people that want to kill us, folks. And you're, you're objecting to us infiltrating their conversations? I don't think so. I don't think so. Senator Paul. Mr. Trump, are Americans safer with dictators running the world in the Middle East? In my opinion... Go ahead, Mr. Trump. In my opinion, we've spent four trillion dollars trying to topple various people that frankly, if they were there and if we could have spent that four trillion dollars in the United States to fix our roads, our bridges, and all of the other problems, our airports, and all of the other problems we have, we would have been a lot better off. I can tell you that right now. We have done a tremendous disservice, not only to the Middle East, we've done a tremendous disservice to humanity. The people that have been killed, the people that have been wiped away, and for what? It's not like we had victory. It's a mess. The Middle East is totally destabilized, a total and complete mess. I wish we had the four trillion dollars or five trillion dollars. I wish it was spent right here in the United States on our schools, hospitals, roads, airports, and everything else that are all falling apart. Thank wow, you. that is exactly well, what President Obama you. said. Go ahead. That's exactly what President Obama has said. I'm amazed to hear that from a Republican presidential candidate. But let's just start. Let's just start with who got it wrong. Who really got it wrong? Hillary Clinton has gotten every foreign policy challenge wrong. The gimmicky red reset button with Vladimir Putin. Recall that she called Bashar al-Assad a positive reformer. And then she opened an embassy. And then later she said over and over and over again, Bashar al-Assad must go, although she wasn't prepared to do anything about it. Recall that Hillary Clinton was all for toppling Muammar Gaddafi, then didn't listen to her own people on the ground. And of course, when she lied about Mr. the Trump. terrorist attack in Benghazi, she invited more terrorists attacks. Thank you. Mr. Trump. 
Well, I, there's nothing to respond to. People feel differently. I mean, the fact is Benghazi was a disaster because of Libya. Everything just fell into place. It could not have been worse. What do we have now? We have nothing. We've spent $3 trillion and probably much more. They have no idea what we spent. Thousands and thousands of lives. We have nothing. Wounded warriors all over the place who I love. We have nothing for it. And by the way, and Ben said, and correctly, and I, I'm not saying this is a knock, because this is one of the finest men. You're not going to find a finer man. But I've been talking about oil for three years. I've been saying, take the oil, take the oil. I didn't say just bomb it. I said, take it and use it and distribute it so that the wounded Thank warriors you. and people... But I've been saying this now all right. for many years. Now, all of a sudden, everybody's saying, take the oil. It wasn't so fashionable to take the oil six months Thank ago. You. I've been saying we, it for years. Miss, Dr. Carson, Dr. Carson, is the Iraq, Middle East... Mr. Trump, yes. we are talking about the most important thing. That's why it's heated. And it's, you're okay with Mr. Assad staying in power. But you're also in favor of winning. If he stays in power, Iran is winning. Hezbollah is winning. Uh, Iran is winning in, in Yemen. They are winning everywhere. If they're winning, how can we be winning? I think Assad is a bad guy. Very bad guy. All right? Lots of people killed. I think we're backing people. We have no idea who they are. The rebels. We call them the rebels. The patriotic rebels. We have no idea. A lot of people think you that they're ISIS. We have to do one thing at a time. We can't be fighting ISIS and fighting Assad. Assad is fighting ISIS. He's fighting ISIS. Russia's fighting now ISIS. And Iran is fighting ISIS. We have to do one thing at a time. We can't go. And I watch, into, watch Lindsey Graham. He said, I've been here for 10 years fighting. Well, he'll be there with that thinking for another 50 years. He won't be able to solve the problem. We have to get rid of ISIS first. After we get rid of ISIS, we'll start thinking about it. But we can't be fighting Assad. And when you're fighting Assad, you're fighting Russia, you're fighting Iran, you're fighting a lot of different groups. But we can't be fighting everybody at one Governor time. Governor Christie, Governor Bush, Commander in Chief question. You've said that uh, Mr. Trump is not qualified to be president because he's not qualified to deal with Vladimir Putin. Why are you uh, better qualified to deal with Vladimir Putin than Mr. Trump? Because I, first of all, I, I know what I don't know. I know what I don't know. I would seek out, as I have, the best advice that exists. I won't get my information from the shows. I don't know if that's Saturday morning or Sunday morning. I don't know which one. I will seek out the best advice, and I will create a strategy, and I will persuade the American people what the, what the role of America should be. I've laid out a policy of rebuilding our military. All of the talk that we're saying here, most of which I agree on, frankly, uh, requires a much stronger military. We now have a lack of readiness that is quite scary. We have planes that were that Harry Truman inaugurated, the B-52. We have the Navy has been gutted and decimated. The readiness of the Marines is way down. If we're serious about America's leadership in the world, then we need to make sure that we have the back of the armed forces. The armed forces radio is here listening to this today. I hope they know that if I'm president, I'll be a commander-in-chief, not an agitator-in-chief or a divider-in-chief, that I will lead this country in a way that will create greater security and greater safety. Mr. Trump. I think it's very sad that CNN leads Jeb Bush, Governor Bush, down a road by starting off virtually all of the questions, Mr. Trump this, Mr. I think it's very sad. And frankly, I watch, I think it's very sad. And frankly, I watched the first debate, and the first long number of questions were, Mr. Trump said this, Mr. Trump said that, Mr. Trump. These poor guys, although I must tell you, Santorum, good guy. Governor Huckabee, good guy. They were very nice, and I respect them greatly. But I thought it was very unfair that virtually the entire early portion of the debate was Trump this, Trump that. In order to get ratings, but Mr. I Trump, guess. it's not CNN. It, ratings, Mr. Trump, I, I was I on just CNN think it's last very night. Watching Excuse me. I think it's very unprofessional. But, but it wasn't. It wasn't CNN. It was me. I watched well, you last night for 16 minutes. Watch, I think it's, it's very not unprofessional. CNN. It's not CNN. Fine. It's America's watching you. Okay, fine. It's America's watching. So I was. I was. I was mentioned so I can bring up something. I think right. Look, the simple fact is, if you think this is tough and you're not being treated and this fairly, isn't tough and imagine I wish what it's it, going to be like dealing with Putin or dealing with as President as Xi or dealing with the, the Islamic terrorism oh, that yeah. exists. This is a tough business oh, to run yeah. for oh, president. Oh, no, you're a tough guy, Jeb. And, it's, and we need to have a leader that is <laughs> real tough. You're never going to be president of the United States tough, by insulting Jeb, yeah. your way to well, the president. Well, let's see. I'm at 42 and you're at 3. So, Doesn't so matter. far, I'm doing better. Doesn't matter. So far, I'm doing better. 
You know, you started off over here, Jeb. You're moving over further and further. Pretty soon you're going to be off the end. This doesn't do right. a thing to yeah, solve one at a time. the problem. One at a time. It, it do sounds a thing more to solve the It sounds more and more at risk. And I tell you, if I'm elected president, we will secure the border. We will triple the border patrol. We will build a wall that works, and I'll get Donald Trump to pay for it. <laughs> I'll build it. Dana. Thank you. Senator Trump. Rubio, please. Mr. Trump. Problem and secure Mr. The Trump, you like to say that you restarted this conversation in the campaign. I think I did. So who do you <laughs> side with? Who do you side with in this? Senator Rubio or Senator Cruz? I have Cruz? a very hard line position. We have a country or we don't have a country. People that have come into our country illegally, they have to go. They have to come back in through a legal process. I want a strong border. I do want a wall. Walls do work. You just have to speak to the folks in Israel. Walls work. If they're properly constructed, I know how to build. Believe me, I know how to build. But I feel a, the, a very, very strong bind, and, and really I'm bound to this country. We either have a border or we don't. People can come into the country. We welcome people to come in, but they have to come in legally. Thank you. It's Governor Bush. Yeah. Mr. Trump, Dr. Carson just referenced the single most important job of the president, the command, the control, and the care of our nuclear forces. And he mentioned the triad. The B-52s are older than I am. The missiles are old, the submarines are aging out. It's an executive order. It's a commander-in-chief decision. What's your priority among our nuclear triad? Well, first of all, I think we need somebody absolutely that we can trust, who's totally responsible, who really knows what he or she is doing. That is so powerful and so important. And one of the things that I'm frankly most proud of is that in 2003, 2004, I was totally against going into Iraq because you're going to destabilize the Middle East. I called it. I called it very strongly. And it was very important. But we have to be extremely vigilant and extremely careful when it comes to nuclear. Nuclear changes the whole ballgame. Frankly, I would have said, get out of Syria, get out. If we didn't have the power of weaponry today, the power is so massive that we can't just leave areas that 50 years ago or 75 years ago, we wouldn't care. It was hand-to-hand -hand combat. The biggest problem this world has today is not President Obama with global warming, which is inconceivable. This is what he's saying. The biggest problem we have today is nuclear, nuclear proliferation, and having some maniac, having some madman go out and get a nuclear weapon. That's, in my opinion, that is the single biggest problem that our country uh, faces. Of the right three now. legs of the triad, though, do you have a priority? Because I want to go to Senator Rubio oh, I, I after think, that. I think him. to me, look, nuclear is just the, the power, the devastation is very important to me. Senator Mr. Trump. Just this weekend, you said Senator Cruz is not qualified to be president because he doesn't have the right temperament and acted like a maniac when he arrived in the Senate. But last month, you said you were opening, open to naming Senator Cruz as your running mate. I did. So why would you be willing to put somebody Let who's a maniac you, one heartbeat away from the president? But I've gotten to know him over the too. last three or four days. He has a wonderful temperament. <laughs> <laughs> He's just fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> You have not been willing to attack Mr. Trump in public, but you did you question his attack. judgment in having control of... Mr. Trump, my listeners tell me again and again they're worried that Hillary Clinton will win the White House because you run as an independent. Are you ready to reassure Republicans tonight that you will run as a Republican and abide by the decision of the Republicans? I really am. I'll be honest. I really am. I mean, people have been putting me the crutch. I really am. Dr. Carson, I, last I, excuse week, me, let me, can I just finish? Oh, please. Uh, I've gained great respect for the Republican leadership. I've gained great respect for many, and I'm going to even say, well, I mean, in different forms, for the people on the day. It's not in different forms, in different forms. But I have great respect for the people I've met through this process. I've never done this process before. I've never been a politician. I mean, for the last six months, I've been a politician. But I will tell you, uh, I am totally committed to the Republican Party. I feel very honored to be the front runner. And I think I'll do very well if I'm chosen, if I'm so so fortunate to be chosen. I think I'll do very well. Polls have come out recently, say I would beat Hillary. I will do everything in my power to beat Hillary Clinton. I can promise. Dr. Carson, Mr. Trump. Our country doesn't win anymore. 
We don't win on trade. We don't win on the military. We can't defeat ISIS. We're not taking care of our great people, the veterans. We're not taking care of them. We have to change our whole way. Our health care system is a disaster. It's going to implode in 2017, just like you're sitting there. Doesn't work. Nothing works in our country. If I'm elected president, we will win again. We will win a lot. And we're going to have a great, great country greater than ever before. Thank you. Thanks to all the